Hi, welcome to the Market Alert for Tuesday, the 19th of January 2020. So today's just a quick overview, bring you up to speed. Markets closed yesterday in observation of the Martin Luther King Day celebrations. So the news uh, for yesterday, although it's uh, fairly light, is uh, what Blaine said, what will be the effect of the 1.9 gazillion Biden spendathon on inflation. Well, we all know what that's going to be. It's going to spell disaster. But this seems to be the theme here, slippery slope. The next wave of spending will not bring prosperity. Of course it won't, because uh, with all of the lockups over the last 12 months, uh, the destruction of the economy, the only thing it's going to be is uh, into the markets. Uh, and that's where this woman comes in, Yellen, our favourite uh, Fed chair or former Fed chair. What could Yellen say to move markets during nomination hearings tomorrow? The obvious answer is, how much do you want? Uh, will probably be the uh, question. And uh, as Peter Schiff uh, put so bluntly, uh, economic rescue plan like throwing a drowning man an anchor. And that is exactly what uh, we're going to see and where it comes back to here. So I agree with Peter. Uh, this is where it ends. It, it may have inflated asset bubbles, bond markets, housing prices, stock markets, but uh, this year you're going to see a, a difference with all of this uh, because it does spell disaster. Um, we've done this now for, this is the 13th year, uh, incredible, and uh, 7 trillion printed last year under Trump. So it just it's going to get worse. And 1.4 trillion before Christmas and New Year, and now they want another 2 trillion. Or as uh, it says here, I think we might as well just go for 1.9 gazillion. If uh, the number exists, then just get it over and done with, instead of this drip feeding until you kill the patient with the financial methadone. So yeah, that's uh, the main uh, news, uh, but then we know this anyway, don't we? It's nothing uh, new to us uh, whatsoever. So today is No News Tuesday, leaves the market free to move to the upside. So we'll look at the rest of the week. We've got... Uh, Bailey speaking again uh, tomorrow, 5 p.m., and uh, Biden's inauguration tomorrow as well. So again, we'll expect the market to be quiet. Thursday, are we going to get more central bankers? Yeah, we've got an ECB uh, press conference at 1.30 on Thursday, and then, of course, uh, the usual uh, uh, rates, etc. for the Eurozone. And then Friday, what have we got? A lot of flash news on Friday, which is a bit of a pain in the first part of the trading session because you've got uh, GBP, the Eurozone, um, and then we've got uh, the GBP also on that uh, morning, Friday morning of the uh, manufacturing flash as well. So retail sales kicks off on Friday morning. So today, no news. So let's have a look at the markets uh, overnight, see where we are. Start off with the German DAX. You can see yesterday the market bounced off the 78, traded through the 38 and finished at the 54 yesterday. So let's get rid of these two. The market finished at those points. Overnight prices have moved higher and they've stopped at the 62% retracement. Given there's no news today, we've got the upside here, uh, barring a shakeout to the downside, of course, but uh, on the upside, this is uh, the target. So the market needs to get through uh, 13,950 uh, would be the psychological level to get through there. And then, of course, you've got uh, 14,000 uh, in between 14,000 and uh, 14,050 for the 78 and then just under 14,100 for the 89 um, percent. So that's the easiest way to remember these figures ballpark. Uh, using the psychological numbers. Uh, overnight, what have we got? Uh, the markets obviously moved higher, as we've just seen, up to the 62% retracement in the daily chart. So let's just squash everything up so we can see where we are in the intraday picture. I'll just uh, shrink this down a bit as well. So the market opened to a bit of a fanfare of volume there, but above the 200, above the uh, DP as well and then stay between two BRNs, uh, which we can see there, uh, which is just above the high as well. So the market is sitting on the previous day's high. Like I said, if you want to get above the high and hold it, that's the only way you're going to keep the market bullish. Markets uh, come back down to this level. Now we can see where we are in the bigger picture. Um, let's just uh, shrink this, uh, well, widen it um, so we can see. So again, coming down to 
the high, the market uh, bouncing off this and the 200 and all of the uh, averages in line at the moment for a move to the upside to the R1 when the futures market opens. Let's have a look at the Dow and uh, you can see uh, a similar picture yesterday the market uh, uh, very quiet obviously because it was closed but overnight the market's made up for it and playing catch up and is at the 62 percent for the overnight markets uh, just the same as uh, the down there so again if you're trading this market these are the numbers round them up or down to the nearest brn and you'll get a pretty good idea of why the market stopped at those levels unless you want to actually transpose these figures onto the daily chart a quick look at uh, yesterday's trading session let's just uh, wind back and uh, the market was uh, moving lower i thought we might have had an attack on the low but we didn't the market found support uh, from the futures market uh, session you can see here a bit of a, a stop at the psychological level 13,700 and you see the buying coming in at this level and then the market opening and uh, moving to the upside there selling pressure coming in at the 200 ma which uh, you would expect that's also around an 89 percent retracement from that level to this point uh, so you can expect some resistance here to, in order to drive through you need uh, an increase in volume which you're seeing there but again notice how the volume now is greater than the selling pressure bar uh, and struggling there as well but we do manage to sneak through the BRN albeit uh, briefly and uh, again you can see the potential weakness now you've got selling pressure here as well the volume is greater so that was the move of the first part of the morning as you can see the weakness there coming in having a look at the uh, daily chart to see if, where we've come off that 78% uh, from uh, Friday there always checking in on the daily chart just to have a look and then we've got uh, some potential weakness there with the market coming off the high first spike in volume once more but uh, you can see coming off the high there so a bit of uh, selling around in order to move higher the selling's got to disappear and uh, you'll see prices there just trading sideways and again I'm having a look to see where we are heading towards that 38 driving through the close we get the increase in volume and then prices make their way back just run out of steam completely and i'm going to fast forward through this uh, you'll see there that the markets what i did here just to see how much strength the market had got so it came back above the five bar moving average can prices close above the 89 percent there uh, in the answer to your question on this occasion they struggled to do so and again uh, you'll see uh, just a slight increase in volume in this uh, bar here as prices came back towards the low having traded uh, to the double top and there's uh, an inside view of uh, what was going on the market became really quiet looking at that 89 the market stops and again just uh, subtly you see there an increase in volume at this level prices attempt once more and then it's a case of just trading sideways and eventually making its way to the downside however we only get the one red bar and then we get a potential buy signal i'm just bringing this back so you can see that the market stopped at the 78 percent retracement there from here to here measured back and uh, prices then uh, reverse come back above the five and the 20 bar moving average as well interesting little bar here the market wasn't doing a lot and this is 80 percent of the volume of the previous bar so there's some selling around at this point but uh, eventually uh, after moving lower and then reversing prices uh, then start to make their way back to the upside get through the scalp uh, what i've done here as well is drawn in this high to this low and you'll see the market stopping at the 89 percent in order to move higher it has to drive through with an increase in volume and uh, you'll see that uh, happening just there not uh, a great deal but it's far greater than the previous bar so again you've got that uh, to the upside uh, redraw the fit uh, the trade back onto the chart a bit of a uh, and move to the upside there also notice now we've got some selling pressure here as well very subtle where it's uh, below the average line uh, but this bar is definitely narrower than the previous bar 
So again, a bit of uh, weakness coming in there. We've got the DP on the upside there. And uh, all of a sudden, we start to see uh, some uh, weakness coming into the market. And this is the bar here. Uh, big increase in volume as uh, the market starts to close below the five bar moving average. And I'm out. And then uh, the market uh, drifting back and then back up. Again, you can see them buying back. And then it just trades sideways. And that's really it uh, for... Uh, the morning session the afternoon isn't even worth looking at it was so uh, dreary so uh, the market just pulling back there down towards the close having moved up earlier on in the session so to keep this one brief and like I say just give you a quick overview of where we are what to expect today uh, no news so a day before the Biden's inauguration so it's a one-way bet really I suppose to the upside unless uh, somebody wants to sell off or, of course, unless Trump comes out with something uh, out of the blue, like he did yesterday. He said that he was going to lift the ban of uh, air travel coming into the U.S. And then uh, two minutes later, Biden put it back. So who knows? Who knows what uh, could happen today? OK, that's it for this one. As ever, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.